here at Air Venture and we found an engine that we don't know much about. I certainly don't know much about it. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm going to speak with Lance Carr, who is with um, Ottawa Aviation Services. I Ottawa Aviation was. Services and we're the uh, we're the North American distributor for MW Fly aircraft. So the engine's made in Italy. I know that because it says so. It says so. And uh, so, what was the idea behind this engine, Lance? What are, what do we got here as a basic concept for an engine? Well, the um, the engine's been around for about ten years. It was uh, actually there were two uh, two aeronautical engineers uh, started from a clean piece of paper a little over ten years ago, and uh, it's not a conversion. Uh, they put together this is the result. It's uh, it's uh, fully liquid cooled, uh, dual ignition, full fade deck. Um, is that a four-cylinder? That's a, that's a four-cylinder engine. Okay. Correct. Yeah. It comes in 95, uh, 115, uh, 130, and 150 horsepower versions. Wow, that's quite a range. Yeah, this is 130 horse you're looking at here. Okay, and, and, and so how do you get the different power? That I mean, 95 to 150 is quite a bit. What changes on the engine to make those higher power? Well, the basic core of the engine is the same. They, uh, the, so, so the 95 horse is a direct drive engine. All right, 95 is turning at uh, 3,300 RPM. Prop is turning at 3,300 RPM. When we move to 115 horse, uh, you're looking at the, we run the engine at uh, at 4,400, and the prop is turning at 2. And then you're using a gear drive for that. We're using a gear drive right up here. Okay. All okay. Right. Great. So, uh, and it looks like uh, conventional carburation. Uh, uh, fuel injection. Fuel injection. Fuel injection okay. and beta. And so then you got to control fuel injection somehow. How do you go about doing that? Correct. Well, uh, as I said, it's FADEC, and this is probably a logical place for me to introduce uh, Chris Adams. He's our director of maintenance from back home. Director of maintenance is Chris Adams. Come on into the picture here a little bit, Chris. And, uh, and tell us, uh, the answer the question that I just posed about how you control the aircraft since it's got fuel injection. Yeah, it's done through uh, two ECUs that are controlled in the FADEC, and it's fuel injected into a throttle body. Okay. So so the, there's dual throttle bodies on it, and it's a uh, single port injection with uh, side mode engine. Okay, and, and how are you cooling the engine? Cooling is a bit 100% liquid cooled uh, to a 2 to 1 ratio, uh, ethylene, ethylene glycol, um, and it's uh, done through a radiator and circulated through a cooling pump in the back. Okay, so we're used to that in the light aircraft yeah. space with uh, liquid cooling. Um, in other uh, aspects about the engine, I'm intrigued by this business of it producing so much extra power out of what is essentially, as you said, Lance, uh, the same core of the engine. Right. So what changes on the engine to allow you to get so much extra power beside the gear drive? Some of it is displacement. We offer a 2.2 liter or a 2.5, okay. and, and depending on the gear ratio. Okay, so, so does the gear ratio change with each of those power increments? Yeah, so the 95 is the direct drive, that one, like Lance said, and uh, the 115, we simply, depending on which gear drive we have on it. So as you see it here, we're dealing with a 1 to 1.19, or sorry, 1, you know, 1 to 1 1.9 gear ratio. Okay. On it. So that's given, so this aircraft's turning between 43 and 48 to maintain a 4,800 RPM. Okay. A 2,400 RPM. Okay. So uh, how about other aspects of the engine? Okay, I understand the company MW Fly is making the, the basic engine. How about exhaust, cooling systems, and all that? Is yeah. it all part of it, or? What you see here, segment? what you see here is uh, a standard insulation coming from uh, and we fly with a standard uh, rad exhaust system, uh, fuel, uh, redundant fuel system, so two fuel pumps up here, and your electronic module. Okay, great. Well, let's call Lance back into the picture. I got a couple questions now about how you're distributing the engine. Uh, what uh, you're out of Canada, but you've got the North American market. Correct. I think you told me. Yep. Okay. And uh, how are you going to support the engine as it begins to come into the country? Uh, what we'll do is uh, we've set up, uh, we've uh, made arrangements with a broker to actually uh, bring everything in through Canada, and we're right now we're looking for dealership opportunities uh, to work with this down through the uh, continental United States. Uh, in the meantime, we'll actually support. Uh, We'll support through our, our main office in Canada, and um, yeah, as we as we look down the road, what we like to see is a network of uh, of, uh, of uh, dealers who would do uh, regular servicing, etc., and heavy maintenance would be done back at our base in Ottawa. 
as we look uh, forward to what the engine could be in the future, is this going to apply to light sport aircraft as well? You got it on a Whitman tailwind. If everybody can't figure out what this is behind us here, but you've got that in this aircraft now. This is an experimental amateur belt, which you can put any engine in anything Correct. there. But Correct. if you go into the light sport space, well, let me ask you: Are you going into the light sport space as well? We are looking at going. We are going into the light sport space. Yes. Okay, that means you've got to then go through the ASTM yeah. standard set. Yeah. Is there progress or action We're in that actually, regard? That, that is that is started right now. In fact, actually, one of that came up in conversation when we were down here. They're they're beginning that process back home in uh, back at their main base. I mean, is there a light sport type aircraft that's already using this engine? Yeah. So in in Europe, right? There's about 80 engines running in Europe right 80 now. Engines, okay. About 80 engines in Europe, and they're they're in a mixed bag of applications. We're running in. Uh, they're running in. Uh, there's a Technion product out there. Okay. Running them. Okay. As a test bed, the aircraft, the uh, the engine test bed is also an LSA product that they're using with uh, at MW Fly International, the head office. Okay. That's the one with about a thousand hours on it. Ah. Okay. Okay. The uh, there's uh, a couple of uh, other light helicopters in Europe that are using it. And uh, so, as I said, it's a, there's uh, some weight shift. There's some, too, huh? some weight. Yeah. There's at least one weight shift trike using it, and there's at least one gyroplane uh, manufacturer. Okay. So using you're it sampling well. kind of around the market yeah, and get right a now. bit of experience. Yes. Now you mentioned the one that the factory that's got a thousand hours on it now. I gather that's the high time engine of today. That is the high time engine of right now. And what are you projecting then for the lifespan of the engine? What's known as TBO or time between overhaul? So a uh, fixing application like this uh, projected to be 2,000 hours. And on the rotary okay. wing application, they're looking at 1,500 hours. All right, a lot of great information there, Lance. Adam, thank you. Christopher, thank you for all that good information that you gave us. And uh, where can we get even more? People are hungry for information on engines. Where do they go on the web? So the engines at uh, mwfly.it. And uh, just actually, if you want it in English, you click on the British flag, and the information will come up. And we're shown there as the North American distributor. And, and where, where uh, can we find you and your operation? Us, again? We're at Auto Aviation Services, AutoAviationServices.ca. Okay. okay. Very good. Well, uh, we want to extend a thank you to Chris Adams, Lance Carr, for giving us some information about the MW Fly engine. You can find lots more about all kinds of light sport aircraft and, and engines of various kinds and many videos on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at AirVenture.